Hello everybody. Um, today I'm going to teach you the basics of remote events. And so for those who don't understand it, I'll teach you the basics. So I'm going to show a demonstration of what a remote event is. Uh, ignore all the background noises. Uh, it's just in your own house, but pretend this uh, part here it is, let's say red. This is the, no, let's make it yeah this is the server side and this is this red is the client side everything in this darker red and the client side is like the start the GUIs all the GUIs so let's make that and everything in the server side is green so like workspace the parts the things like the all of these are server side and you can see them what a remote event typically is uh, is sorry here's the rule a server side server side anything in the server side cannot access in a script I guess you cannot access anything from the client side in filtering enabled and anything in the client side cannot access anything in the server side unless you have a remote event so the gold what well, a remote event is it's like a telephone let's say the it's like a telephone it transmits a let's say a sound into the other side so you know in real life how you can't imagine you're in, this is your house and this is your friend um you say something he can't hear you because you know it won't work because he's in the other side but this is like a telephone, a remote event. So you can do something in the uh, client side, for example. You insert a remote event in replicated storage. That's where it usually goes. It also goes into tools, but you can say uh, game the replicated storage that remote event fire server. Once you fire it this will activate in a way it will transmit it will fire into that remote event it will you will uh it will talk into the telephone and once you call it from the server side so game the replica storage that remote event you have to call the exact name of the remote event you transmit it from the client side the on server event connect function um it will do whatever so once you transmit that then once you call it from the server side it will transmit to that side it's a one-sided thing um here i'll show you an example of how this works um so if you ever made a tool a magic script the key press event would usually you can make it as a local script but if you want to make it put a new object into workspace uh, making it into a local script which makes makes it client-sided only you yourself would see it but if you make it server-sided everybody will see it including yourself but sadly can't really server scripts don't usually work in client-sided and client-side scripts don't usually work in server-sided so let's say um, Let's go to the second screen. Uh, here's the script. So this is a local script. So let's say, oh yeah, it works vice versa. So here are the rules. Um, server to client. Server to client. The server part would be um, would be like game that replicated store here. Um, you could say for I player. This is very important in pairs. Actually, no, no, no. Yeah, this is for players. For I don't do this on local script. I'm just showing an example, but to write in players, since you need some form of object value for I player in pairs to game dot players dot get children do. Uh, 
Return. Oh, game dot player is like for I player get children. Hmm, what is this? Okay. Hold on. Game dot players. Uh, oh, here we go. This do yeah. Um, why is it not working? Mm. <laughs> yeah, let me check. Uh, my game. Ignore all sounds in the background, please. It's like super loud. Players that get children do. Alright, here we go. Um, for up oh, here we go. Okay, do so. This is server sided. It would say something like local rep. Hopefully, you know what a variable a variable is. Game up search that. Let's say remote event that fire client, and you make that player player. So once a fire it will fire to the client side. It's like that. Now, since a remote event is a one way thing, uh, client side. So to call it, you would say you have to have the exact name of that remote event. So if you call it remote event two, you have to call it remote event two. And to add a remote event, you have to insert it in replicated storage. This is a remote event. So to call it in a client side, you would say game dot replicated storage dot remote event two, and you would say on server event. <coughs> Connect function like that. That's how would you would do it in the client side. Now, once you call it, you can typically do any functions you want to do that you want to change in the client. Since you fire from the server to client, you, the only reason you would actually use the remote event is if you want to change something in the client or if you want to change something from the server. So let's say if you want to change something from the server. In the client side, like if you make a GUI and like an intro GUI, like you don't want the players to walk while, let's just say, it, like you want to add a leader stat value. You want to add like after a person click a text button, it would it would add plus five points. You would fire a remote event from the client side into the server side and change the the players um, player stat server sided since leader stat is a server sided thing. So let's say vice versa, you would do game. So client to server, you would do game that replicate storage dot remote event to that fire server. You don't need anything inside here unless you wanna transfer data. But I can, you know, I'll show you now. Do you want if you wanna transfer data? Let's say local x equals 20. Local t equals 30. X t. Um, so this is the client side. Right, that's client. Uh, now for the server side, this game that replica storage that remote event to that on. Oops, my bad guys. That's on client event. There we go. On server event connect function <clears throat> so x equals 20 t equals 30 to call this you would just put any number you want value 1 value 2 value 1 equals 2 x which x equals to 30 value 2 equals to t t equals to 20 so this can only the data will only transmit into the server side if you use the exact remote event name so x, it doesn't matter what name you put here, the order matters here. So if, let's say script, if you make it like script.parent.brick dot dot brick, uh, brick color equals, okay, I can't, that's too long. Let's say script.parent. Script.parent is value one, so like that. 
you would say value one, which is script dot parent dot brick color equals brick color dot new equals mint. Let's say like that. So that's how it would work. So besides that, you fire it from the client and you call it from the server sided. So if you want to fire something, a remote event to the server sided to server to the server side, you want to that means you want to change something from the server side. So if you want to fire, so you can't do this. Like you can't do game dot players dot local player dot starter gu like starter gui dot screen gui dot enabled enable equals false no you can't do that if you wanna do that you could just change it you could just do that function it's, you can say that from the client side but if you do this so imagine it starts um you could do like script that parent pretend it's a local script script the parent that parent that text button let's say that mouse button one mouse button one down connect function so once they click it you wanna you know fire something so let's say walk speed equals 20 so that will be the walk speed I want the player to have so let's say let's fire the variable walk speed so we're gonna call it from the server side that will be value one right so since we're gonna change the walk speed we can't do it uh, so we can do the server sided so we can do for i players player in pair you know what this, this, I don't wanna do all that mess again in pairs do bam player that character dot walk speed equals equal value one the walk speed of the player now would be 20 you transmitted it called it bam so you need to understand what things need to be server-sided what things to be client-sided and the most simplest way I, I could explain this is anything you want to happen to the player make it client-sided local script if anything you want to do something that everybody want to like could see like if you want to make something like a part instance instance that new part into a workspace you can make that server sided but if you do instance that new that part in a local script that would be client sided only you could see that change server sided would make everybody uh, see that change um, so if you go back to here let's see if you can see that so yeah that's like a key so anything in a server side is anything that you want every player to change so like imagine this is your own little portal this is your okay this is your own little portal and that's an like player two player three right in reality you yourself let's see all those players are surrounding this server sided because all the players character the character like when you join the game you can see your character that's server sided anything inside it you have to change it um server sided um so everything revolves around this server sided workspace let's say workspace and if you want to send something to certain client or to your own client you yourself would fire a remote event just one remote event you don't have to repeat every same thing because if you click something from the server side like for when I did for I player that will do any that will get the player let's say who clicked something and would transfer uh, would fire the remote uh, remote event to that player so hopefully this got you a little bit mm, how do I say this this made you understand remote event a bit easier. I don't know if I explained some things wrong, but this is my concept of understanding remote events. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, and comment. Go check out the other videos. And if you want me to do any scripting tutorials, anything at all, building, speed, anything, just comment down below. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys all next time. Peace out.